Hey, hello there. I guess you clicked on this video so that you could learn how to move a strong man with minimal effort. Just like that behind me. Luckily for you, I can show you how. Hey guys, so I've learned how to get some cheap powers. Check it out. And without the power of chi. I was challenged to do so and I like proving people wrong because I'm just that petty. So here we are. What makes it better is, is that one of Adam Meisner's students and instructors has actually given us a clue on how to perform this trick. Hi, I'm Julius Lutero. I'm a Tai Chi teacher. I'm a also a direct student and uh, Master Adam Meisner. Thanks, Julius, for your hard efforts. Uh, more about him later. So before we learn how to do this trick, we've got some ground to cover first. Hey guys, so originally I intended this video to be breaking down these uh, Tai Chi tricks of Adam Eisner, but it has become a little bit of something more. If you want to just skip down to the timestamp below to break down a trick on how to move a strong man, you may proceed to do so. So if you don't know who Adam Meisner is, he is this guy. Touch. Just one gram of pressure. Because it's correct, not because it's light. A fake martial artist who claims to control the human body with chi energy. He was featured in the Power of Chi documentary where he demonstrates his chi powers with several professional athletes. His hands, actually. And, you're trying to, and you were able to push him doing this? Oh, you were watching. There's no way that... <laughs> Now, of course, he's not going to be able to move the, the Brian Shaw if he doesn't know how the trick is performed. Here is how Julius describes Adam's role in the Power of Chi documentary. A film where the director's invited these elite athletes of all different disciplines from around the world and he's asked Adam Meisner to not use martial art techniques but just use the Chi. So the purpose of the film is to try to show some demonstrations of how chi affects and destabilizes the heart force. So I do have a problem with documentaries because they can be deceiving because they create a narrative which is constructed in order for the audience to come to a singular conclusion. So the problem with that is a lot of information gets left out. We don't see what happens off camera. We don't see what happens behind the camera. We don't see if the participants get told by the director and crew to just play along. And of course, we don't see what they're getting paid. The content that is filmed still has to go through the editing process where the director and the editor select the, the content that they want to put through for the, for the movie to create that narrative. So there's a lot of info and context that we miss out on and some info gets edited to mean something completely different than what was originally filmed. A good example of this is Tiger King because Joe Exotic is portrayed as this redneck anti-hero but in actuality he's just a shady businessman, racist and is known for hiring known animal abusers or supersize me. No one was capable of replicating the results following the same experiment as Morgan Spurlock. There were some people that even recreated the experiment and ended up losing weight. It turns out that Morgan was an alcoholic while filming the documentary. So consuming alcohol didn't give accurate results to what McDonald's food could do because McDonald's was not tested on in isolation. So how does this apply to the Power of Chi documentary? We do not get a great explanation from anyone on how to build up this Chi energy and you know it's kind of kept in the dark. So the audience doesn't really know how to build it. Oh no, it just exists. So we as an audience are kept in, in the space where this, where 
this chi is mysterious and we are intrigued to find out more. To feed our curiosity, if you will, but never given a great explanation. They had the budget to hire Morgan Freeman and to hire the director David Grover. So that means they had a massive budget. Or they had a substantial budget. So they could have just paid these athletes and tell them, hey, just play along. They could have asked them to play along with or without Adam's knowledge. Who knows? It doesn't really matter. And never mind the fact that when you participate in a film like this, there are contractual obligations to abide to. So they could sign a contract that instructs them not to talk about their experiences with this documentary. So we will never know the truth. We all should know that athletes make majority of their money from outside deals and not necessarily from their sport. The UFC fighter pay has been debated for quite a while now and it has come to light that majority of UFC fighters don't actually get paid well. Unless you are like best of the best and even then it is considerably lower in comparison to other athletes at the top of their sport. Same goes with strongmen. And of course, one thing that we need to understand is that participating in this documentary does not take away from their achievements. They still went out and achieved those things. They did not put themselves in a situation in this documentary which undermines their achievements. Okay, so I would just like to add that uh, if you really want to research all these athletes' pay and stuff like that and where they get most of their money from, there's a lot of information about it on the, on the internet. But what I would really like to add is about Lyoto Mashida uh, and Addison Silva once having a training camp and having Steven Seagal uh, join in. So Steven Seagal thought that he had a coaching role, which he actually didn't. Uh, Lyoto and Anderson just kind of kept him around as a running gag. So if he played along then with Steven Seagal, what makes you think that he's not playing along with it now. It just seems to be this perception in, in external martial artists and even internal martial artists that it's that chi is just rubbish. <laughs> because it is. If we say chi is energy, then we can agree that it exists. However, this method of manipulating chi through the human body onto somebody else's body is not possible. That's a bunch of hot garbage. Let's see if this man mountain is indeed immovable. Wow. It's even more extraordinary when you see that Adam is not even taking a stance. He's not even transferring his weight from his back leg to his front leg. His feet are side by side, yet he's moving Brian with ease. The narration for this film doesn't give any technical nuance. Describes what is being seen and trying to make it seem more exciting for the storytelling purposes. So one thing I want to bring to light about Morgan Freeman narrating this film, uh, because he does a lot of narration for a lot of documentaries, uh, he brings no legitimacy to the information in this documentary. His star power doesn't add any legitimacy to this documentary. It just shows that they had a budget to pay him for his work because he is, you know, well sought after in this line of work and his price is pretty high. His narration actually makes this film seem a bit more pretentious. I know that Meisner's following love the fact that Morgan Freeman participated in this film because, you know, a mainstream celebrity somehow makes things seem more legit. Meanwhile, uh, many celebrities have scammed their, their fan base for many years. They work for money. That's it. So I just wanted to illustrate here and show that Adam's in a square stance there, so we call it a neutral stance. So in that stance, if you try it yourself, you have very little power to stop any incoming force. So here's another angle where you can see that Brian's in a long stance, so he's very stable there. And Adam, so again, this is a demonstration of Adam omitting Tai Chi abilities or skills so there's the line along his heels so he's at a, a huge disadvantage here with anyone let alone with the mountain that is brian shaw 
So there's a direction of force of the stance of Brian. The natural direction of force is where you can see the arrow now. So Brian wasn't asked to push on Adam, he was asked to not let Adam push him. So there is our clue. If Adam is not being pushed directly, then how is the weakness in his stance being, being exploited? I would have to push in that direction of where the stance is weak, right? And so, under those conditions, if you try pushing on someone like, and I mean anyone, like even a 15 year old with a neutral stance like that against them in a full long stance, you will actually bounce out on that same line of the direction of the force there that's in that picture. So. Adam's at a major disadvantage here, so... That's not happening. No, he is not because he's not being directly pushed. Brian Shaw is just being strong and holding that position. He is trying not to be pushed. He is just trying to stay strong in that position and revert back to that position. He's actually using Brian's reactions for a game of push-pull. It's simple by mechanics, but more on that later. So, hence he's using his internal skills is using his internal ability to neutralize Brian's force and then from his feet to be able to emit chi through his body to affect Brian's strength and size and structure and stability. <laughs> How does that feel? It's 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 really different really different it's different so julius tried to make a point of how out of breath brian was after this exercise and i noticed how this adds to the narrative of like oh wow you can make a strong man tired with this all right i just want to be logically clear on a few things here the pursuit of athletic performance is not going to be a healthy one contact sports generate impact on the human body which can damage the human body you're gonna have broken bones joints torn muscles the works that is not healthy essentially there is being a strong man if you're a competitive strong man getting to the highest level of performance your body goes through a lot of strain Brian Shaw is weighing about 200 kilograms he is heavy he's got a lot of mass to move around that requires a lot of energy. He eats over 10,000 calories on a daily basis. And that puts a lot of strain on the digestive system. It's already requiring his body to use a lot of energy to digest all that food. Now, the thing is, when you are putting the body under that amount of strain the entire time, just so that you can lift heavy things, it really does have an impact on your body. We would have to measure the visceral fat around his, around his organs. That's putting a lot of strain on his organs as well. That's a lot of constraint. This lifestyle alone will just put him out of breath. And that, this strongman lifestyle would just end up kill most people. All I'm saying is that these competitive strongmen have the breathing ability of a pug. You make them walk down the street, they are severely out of breath already. Yeah. You would assume that I could just hold yes. and not move, but it's like he'll, it's like you take me one direction and then you channel that somehow and then we go back the other way, but instead of being able to stop the movement the other way, we go harder the other way. It's kind of nuts. Yeah. yeah. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is our next clue. So are you ready to learn how to move a strong man? Let's go. Cool, first and foremost, it's a trick. Cool, so if he pushes on me directly, yeah, as I try to push him, look at my stance, I'm not gonna be able to push him, in fact, he's gonna be able to push me. And I'm wearing pluckies, flip-flops. So, like me, being balanced, it's even a greater compromise. Who would have thought, right? Okay, the trick is, He's not pushing me directly. If we tell him to hold a position and he has to prevent me from pushing him, he's immediately bracing. So what this does is, as I push down, he's gonna push up. And as he pushes up, I work with that. 
Yeah, and then immediately when I work with that, he's going to push down again to resist this or the direction of force that I'm presenting now. And I work with that in order to move it. It's about directing, misleading, and working with his resistance. It's a trick. Okay? So if he just has to prevent me from pushing him, right? I can immediately push down, and as soon as he resists that, Okay, I can push up again because once again I am working with the resistance that he's giving back as a response to what I'm with the resistance that I'm presenting to him. Okay, so uh, we can use uh, multiple uh, directions for, for when we uh, present force. I push up and then using um, multiple directions pushing away, it gives him more to address, makes it difficult for him. and now you can see he's already getting tired because he's doing more effort than me. Okay, with more practice obviously you can get better at this trick because you get a feel for how people move, but the thing is this is not realistic. When it comes to things like fighting and stuff like that. You're staying loose and relaxed and you're only, you know, maybe bracing for certain techniques at the point of impact, like when you punch, you clench your fist and you stiffen your forearm so that you don't hurt the, you don't break anything where you're presenting the impact. But like for scenarios like grappling, if I push him, he's gonna push back. And we use that in order to do our techniques for like, I mean with judo for example, we, if I move him one way, he posts out, and he's probably gonna like say posture up. That's when I do my judo. Job. But here's here's the thing: like he's always engaging, right, with 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 this with this with this exercise. Okay, he's always engaged because he's been given instructions to do one thing, right? Prevent me from moving him. And we always prevent that, and then we can attack the weaknesses in the stars, which is one, this direction, and that direction. So if I push up, and he's pushing back to maintain that position, pulling him towards this direction will be the weak side, all right? If I pull him forward this way, and he pops up, the weakness is still there in the stars to be able to push him. This chi power thing doesn't exist. This exercise is actually designed for the person who is resisting to fail. Okay, where's the weakness in my stance? Here, but he's not pushing directly onto me. He's just preventing me from pushing him. I'm at no disadvantage because there's no direct force onto me. All right, but if I play with his reactions, okay, if he resists and I just have to present the force in one direction, already to the weak side, to another weak side, it's easy to manipulate. Okay guys, this is Shane. He is a competitive strong man. Uh, how much can you lift over your shoulders, Shane? Yeah, we're about 130 k's. 130 k's? And what is the, the, the heaviest truck pull that you've done? Probably 10 ton arm of arm and 16 ton with the harness, with the guardrail. Pretty strong dude, right? So, um, as explained with everything before, we are going to replicate how to move a strong man. You see, it's that easy. And I've also got my neutral stance. We're going to do it once more. Okay, so let's do that one more time, but in slow motion and with Morgan Freeman's voice. Let's see if this man mountain is indeed immovable. Wow. It's even more extraordinary when you see that Adam is not even taking a stance. All right, Shane is in on the trick, he knows. I told him the exact instructions as explained earlier, and because he is very strong, he has a very stronger reaction, so it's easier to manipulate. Thanks, Shane. Thank you. Like we all 
have chi. Of course we do. Chi is energy, right? The difference between a, a corpse lying on the floor and you standing up. The only difference is one's energised and one's just a piece of cold meat. This still doesn't explain what is happening. That's like saying it's the difference between the wood is on fire or it's not. It doesn't explain what's happening very well. Oh, how do you make that fire happen? Chi. It's all tricks. And it's like, well, that's like saying that writing is all tricks. No, that is bull. Writing is not a trick. It can be used as a tool to trick somebody but its primary focus is not to deceive someone. A trick is defined as cunning act or scheme intended to deceive or outwit someone. And that's what this exercise was, a trick, because it was designed for the participant to fail. And after this trick has been done, the participant may be susceptible to believe that this chi energy thing is real. Now, it is important to be clear that there were phonies before Meisner that have been caught out on their BS. George Dillman, for example. And yet, there's still George Dillman um, instructors out there teaching that bogus no-touch knockouts. Some physicists will say that everything's particles of light. And then inside, you know, the, the smallest atom that makes up matter May I add that uh, Julius goes on to talk about quantum physics, but never actually addresses uh, how this applies to the whole chi manipulation thing. He goes on about particles that create matter and that the world's just mostly empty space, but he fails to talk about how those particles create matter and that matter has certain physical properties and are reactive to other forms of matter. He doesn't say anything about how particles gain kinetic energy and become unstable and therefore can be transferred because energy can just be transferred, it can't be destroyed. In science, loosely, does not prove your argument. Yes, energy exists. Energy being transferred is possible. You know, breathing, blood flow, the whole works. But if your argument is you have to experience it for yourself, then I think you're starting to go into that cult talk, my man. So on that subject of cult talk, generally people from these groups, they will use scientific information, which is factual, to back up their claims, such as Newton's laws, for example. However, these are just baselines to the argument. They're not actually giving more detail and what this does is this makes the argument very difficult to attack because they are using factual information. However, when you actually go into more detail, there is quite a lot of loopholes or a lot of tidbits that are missing that explains what's going on. So for instance now, with these tricks that we are demonstrating, when you brace, you are staying rigid. And this allows the body to be put off balance quite easily because when somebody is bracing, they're being strong and they're preventing from being pushed, you can use that reaction to manipulate them. The body is a system of levers after all. And now what happens is you take away those levers and you're taking the body's ability to absorb shock. And thus, what happens is people have to move around to adjust themselves. This is just simple biomechanics being used as a ploy to make it seem like this whole chi thing is real. But because of the nature of these tricks, a lot of the movements get over-exaggerated. The exercise remains in a controlled environment. If somebody were, was not to comply to the instructions, none of this would look the way that it does. Just another thing about that factual information, uh, this documentary does use a lot of misinformation. There is a, a part where Lyoto Mashida says that... It's very controversial when it comes to... to power because you think that to beat someone you need to be like a stick mm -hmm. you no know, very very contracting to beat someone to push someone but Adam shows us that if you relax you can create more power you can create more energy and your outcome will be much much better 
if you look at Leona Machida fight, Anderson Silva, Conor McGregor, they are loose. They are relaxed. You don't get that whipping motion from being rigid. Take a look at Tyson Fury, Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Robertson, Lennox Lewis. Also guys that are very loose and relaxed. They don't stay rigid. That Leona Machida said is already should be a clear sign that this whole thing is scripted in order to make the Tai Chi masters look far superior than what they really are. Look at some of the comments that Julius left in the previous video of mine stating uh, very loose scientific facts of information which covers the baseline for most concepts but never goes into greater detail with it. Now, I know I may come across as arrogant and immature to these guys. However, I am not going to respect stupidity and lies. I full-heartedly believe that this is a con because people pay so much money to attend these seminars. And by using these tricks to get you involved into the next seminar and to buy the online courses, you're being deceived. And I cannot respect a con man, no matter how cunning he is. Oh, do you want to learn more tricks that Adam Meisner does? Of course you do. Let's check it out. Okay guys, so uh, you came to learn more tricks. The thing is, if we use the same idea of standing strong, all right, and just bracing, and you know, just holding that position as much as possible with me um, pushing and him trying to prevent me from pushing him, we can achieve the same uh, effect with uh, other tricks, all right? So let's do that finger one, right? If he stands strong with his fists, right? So the weakness in the stance is in that direction with uh, how he's standing with his right foot behind him and his left foot forward, right? So if I uh, just touch with my fingers and I push, no, no, no bueno, right? So if I just get my fists underneath his, I can use multiple direction and push up and push him off balance. Okay. Again. If he like resists a little bit, I can work with it. React again. See. Oh, let me do it in a in a neutral stance. Okay, um, the other one that we can do is that whole push hands thing. Okay, so that this is not proper push hands, but this is, you know, a, a part of it, all right? And then they do this whole flowing thing. Okay, so the thing is, right, I'm pushing his elbow in. So that's already strong, all right? And I can work with that. But now also, what we would like to do is get that high. So you see how he hunches up and his waist on his heels? At this point, he's off center and I can push him very easily. Okay, so if he uses the same idea of, you know, being strong and bracing, okay, we can achieve the same effect. So we can flow, and you can flow with me, and I'm working with it, working with it, working with it, working with it. Okay, and then eventually, whoop, easy peasy. Just simple biomechanics once again. Okay, cool, so now we're gonna do the one that was made famous by McDojo Live. Once again, we are um, obeying the same uh, principles uh, beforehand, which is I'm already determining where he is, right, and how he's bracing, so, all his reactions are still predictable and I can just move with it. So, uh, on the couch, for instance, he comes in at an angle and I, he grabs here and I tell him to stay strong. Okay, cool. So now, he's bracing. All I have to do is just a little movement in the hip and move with it. Uh, again, so here, like, the weakness in the stance is there. So, where am I gonna push? Yeah, 
easy peasy. Or, you know, he's pushing with me, right? There's nothing stopping me from moving away. Look, he's off balance, all right? So if he's trying to hold on to me and, you know, stay strong and I pull away, the same thing can apply here, right? Where now here, what's he gonna do? He's still gonna try and be strong, right? Hey, look, I know couch jitsu. I've got chi powers. Wow, Dragon Ball Z is real. Kamehameha. Because it's correct, not because it's light. One gram of pressure. Light is just light. How much cocaine? Not light, not heavy, not fast, not slow. <laughs> correct. Not because it's light. Light is just light. Because it's correct. So my weight's sinking into the chair, right? And he can be heavy, like really on me. Oh, he crushes me. Ah, he's crushing me. Oh. Come on. And there you have it. Nobody in this video has had any form of Tai Chi training. If this video has made you mad because you're a Meisner follower, then I ask you to take a friend who has had no Tai Chi training whatsoever and give them the exact same instructions that I have given in the earlier demonstrations and you'll see that this is going to be very easy to perform. So easy in fact that it's going to be absolutely silly and this serves no purpose in combatives and that was my point in my previous videos. This is an unrealistic form of resistance that the participant is giving. They're not just going to hold a position and be strong. They're going to push you backwards. They're going to pull you towards them. When they hold you, they're going to try and lift you up. And yes, there is a way to make yourself heavier than what you actually are to make people struggle to pick you up because it's just the way you distribute your weight. But if these demonstrations serve no purpose, then what are their place? That's the point that I'm trying to get at. Now I know some of y'all are saying, but you haven't touched hands with Meisner. It feels like your nervous system gets confused. So let me know if this process sounds familiar to you. You find this bullshito interesting, but questionable. You save up some money and go try out a seminar near you. You're there, everybody, talks about their experiences of how they had doubts and how they believe and how they're training. They love bomb you. They build up hype around Adam. Oh no, you must touch hands with him. It's an unbelievable experience. They let you know that it's great to have you there and that you're gonna love the experience. You're gonna learn so much that no other place can teach you. You're there in attendance and you practice after the given demonstration. Now the demo will be, should be something similar to what we have um, demonstrated earlier in the video. You find it working without realizing that it was a trick to make the given participant fail within a controlled environment. You see Adam walking around during the practice and when he gets involved, he touches hands with the participants and you see him moving everyone around with ease. But this is your first seminar and he doesn't acknowledge you and you don't get to touch hands with him. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. You find this whole experience cool and you sign up for the online courses. So you pay money for this, for this online training program to learn more. You are utterly surprised by the difficulty of the training. You like the challenge that this training is giving you and this helps you set up some goals for yourself. You are now starting to believe fully that you can get this power and you fully believe that Adam is totally legit by this point. That's if you haven't fully believed in him yet. But up to this point, there should be no more doubts. Because at the end of the day, why would the training be this hard, right? 
You go to a second seminar, finally. You finally get to touch hands with Meisner and you feel his power. Touches your hand with two fingers and you just can't control your nervous system. And that is because up to this point, you have been psychologically conditioned to believe that this power of his exists. You see, you were not part of the inner circle at the first seminar. And that's why he didn't acknowledge you. He already knew that you didn't fully believe without a doubt yet. You signed up for the online training. Now he knows he has you because he knows the difficulty of the training will help you set up a goal for yourself. And this is where the conditioning truly begins to happen. Actually, it, it, it happens with everybody else telling you their experiences and love bombing you and all that jazz. But it is the online courses which plants the final seeds into your mind. And that's where you become part of the inner circle. And this is when Adam will recognize you and be willing to touch hands with you. Because this is your second seminar and he knows you have been conditioned to believe. Now, this may be surprising to some of you, but this is how cults start. Oh yeah, no, Scientology is just a bunch of BS. You have to experience it first. It's the same argument. The number of people that believe in this does not prove that it's real. People can be vulnerable and impressionable. But you can make anybody believe anything that you want. And you can look at previous frauds like George Dillman, and he still has people that practice that, were, that used to be under his instruction. Same no, no touch knockout malarkey. Oh, but the Marshall Man seminars only invite the best. No, the Marshall Man sells to you the romanticized idea of Chinese or traditional martial arts. May I add that martial in martial arts means fighting or war? So, therefore, martial arts means fighting arts or war arts. And with that being said, there is absolutely nothing martial like about that man. And yes, I've been watching those martial man videos that some people have recommended to me and the explanations and instructions are way too loose to understand. It's like there's a secret missing. And then the argument is like, oh no, but I'm familiar with internal martial arts and that's why I understand it. Like, nah man. If there's details that are missing that you actually have to like sign up for or not very well explained, then I mean, that's bogus. I mean, you get jujitsu instructionals over, over the internet, over YouTube, and you can see that some people practice stuff that is complete BS. And then you see the guys that really know something, they just give a taste of what they practice in this system that they're working. Once again, not all the details are given, but you're given enough understanding on how to apply the said maneuver and what it leads to. That's a major difference. Now I know a bunch of you are going, oh, but I think you should just go fight Adam and find out for yourself. Or you should go touch hands with Adam and you should go find out for yourself. One, I am not spending all that money to waste my time. I think I could just maybe start a GoFundMe, and if you guys are willing to donate money to sponsor me, then I can use that money to go fight him. Can use that money to fly him down and myself down to go fight on street beefs. Yeah, I wanna pick the environment where I'm fighting that guy. No meet and greet beforehand. No, hey, how are you doing? We just meet up there in the, in the street beef scrapyard, and we go. I will choose no other conditions on how we meet and how we sort it out. So that's all I'm going to cover about this for now. So proceed to argue in the comment section down below. I know all you Meisner followers love calling me out. And guess what? Your engagement does me good for my videos. So keep going. And for those of you who are new to my channel, please let me know what your thoughts are down below as well. If you enjoyed this video, please give a like and smash that subscribe button. Get your friends to like it too. The Meisner followers are going to rapidly click the dislike. Also, be sure to check out my previous videos on Meisner or my video on how to fake kick somebody in the nuts. So until next time, take care and peace out. I wanna take you for a ride.